What's up, Urban Acolyte family? My name is Prince, and I'm an Urban Acolyte. And I guess you can see the uh, Rogue One inspired shirt that uh, the homie Chris Ryan's designed. Uh, what does it say? Keep on breathing and uh, Urban Acolytes right here. Um, so it's uh, inspired by the Rogue One uh, design or the Rogue One uh, symbol or poster design or I don't know how to say it, but you, it's inspired by Rogue One. That's all I need to say. So I want to uh, kind of reflect on uh, my experience last week in uh, Phoenix training with uh, Sifu Ash Higgs doing some Ely Chin training. Uh, that workshop was supposed to have been hosted or taught by uh, Dasha uh, Daria Sargiva. She is the highest ranked student in the Ely Chin Federation in the world um, ever since the student grading levels were introduced to the curriculum. Unfortunately, um, she and her teacher, um, Sifu Alex, uh, their visas were denied. Originally, I thought that had something to do with this whole Trump thing and the Russians, but it turns out that uh, I guess they've traveled here so much that uh, uh, customs realized they were coming here for business purposes, so they needed to file for a business visa. All right, so uh, so unfortunately, Dasha was not able to make it, but she did uh, design uh, the curriculum for us in their videos for everyone who attended to watch. Um, I won't be sharing those because uh, because I'm not going to share them. That's all you need to know. Anyway, um, I had a I had a great time at the workshop. It was it was fun. Uh, it was very painful for me though. Um, real internal kung fu changes your body, right? It it works on uh, the joint. It it realigns things. Um, it changes the structure of your body, right? It just like working out, you know, lifting weights, right? Uh, you build new neural connections, and sometimes that involves pain. Right. Um, one of the things that I became aware of is that I don't I don't move my hips properly. And part of that comes from uh, just me being a long distance student. You know, when you're watching videos, you don't have someone there to correct you. So, you know, you mimic the movements and you do the best you can. And in this kicking workshop, what I learned is all of the kicks in Ely Chin, um, the, the hips is what moves and all the leg does is follow that movement of the hips, right? It's almost like a golf, a golf swing, right? Your, your torso, uh, actually a golf swing, the, the power starts from the feet and moves up the torso, right? It's the waist that really powers your golf swing and your arms are just along for the ride and you transfer power through to that club head and that hits the ball and makes it go far, right? And you get rich like Tiger Woods. I don't even know if Tiger's the best golfer now because I don't follow golf. But you get my point, right? So my hips hurt a lot. My back was hurting a lot. Uh, my legs hurt because it was a kicking work, kicking and stepping and footwork workshop. And uh, I just was not in the mood to stand around and, and uh, conduct uh, uh, Star Wars chats at all last week. <laughs> that and I was exhausted. Uh, it took me a while to recover from, uh, from my flight. Uh, getting back at 12.30. The flight got back to Nashville at 12.30 and I didn't go to sleep until almost two and then got right up to, uh, to go work at the high school uh, the very next morning. Uh, got there by about 6.25, 6.30. So I was running on very little sleep. Now about the workshop, um, it, it's always fun to touch other Ely Chin people. I was, and I mean, I, I could spend the whole time of this video talking about um, touching uh, Jeff, Jeff Wong. He's been a Facebook friend of mine for a while. Um, I think I had the conversation with him about uh, the time when I thought about quitting Ely Chin because I just felt like I wasn't getting, uh, uh, I wasn't getting the art. Right? I didn't feel like I was getting a lot of support. Uh, I just kind of felt like I'm just doing something and have no idea what's going on and I'm not making progress. And uh, I think I had that conversation with him because he wanted to spend a lot of time uh, working with me, spinning with me, uh, giving me tips. Uh, he actually drove me back to uh, to the airport when I was going to take, just planning to take a Uber so he could attend the, you know, the end dinner banquet. We always go out to eat as a group. It's one of the things I love about the workshop is you get to see after you train and sweat all over people and get kicked by them and spin with them and, 
everything else and we all get to sit around and kind of laugh and eat food and, 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 and exchange tips sometimes. Uh, usually after all that training, the last thing we want to talk about is Kung Fu. But he gave me a lot of tips on the way back to the airport. And one of the things that I was really oppressed, impressed um, with my interaction with Jeff was how he felt. And I know that if, you, if you're not a martial arts person, especially internal martial artists, that might kind of sound kind of, I don't know, how did he feel? <laughs> how did you feel, Jeff? <laughs> but what I mean is in internal Kung Fu, especially um, we call it Tai Chi energy, Pung, right? Um, each one people in uh, China, they, they call it like Hun Yan Li, right? Having force, it's like when you have, it's the best way I can explain it. Basically, it's like your body is a, a, one of those stability balls, the big ones, right? You've seen the, the funny videos. Uh, there's the one where the kid runs and the little brother is standing on the bed and the kid runs at him and with the, the ball and he hits his brother, his brother bounces off the ball, the, the ball and hits the, I, I guess he hits like the, the closet door and breaks it and starts crying or you've seen like people do stupid things with those balls. The thing about Kung Fu Panda when he like really learns Kung Fu and he's like bouncing people off his belly, that's the best example I can think of of Pung, right? And uh, in Ili Chin we talk about having these spheres, the sphere of offense and defense and that the way I conceive it now that could change in the future when I improve and and my uh, conceptual knowledge of Ili Chin improves. Uh, the spheres of offense and defense, that is a way of expressing Pung, right? So uh, you're always able to make these spheres in your body, right? These, these spherical shapes, right? And the thing is, is that there are angles where you can climb over those spheres and, and cut them so that you can get inside some and steal their inner, steal their energy but I don't mean like some mystical, I just mean they're weak, right? Their structure is weak, right? Uh, there's no Wu here. Uh, even though we can talk about in terms of Qi and, and Yi and Li and everything else, uh, we're just talking about angles, right? The body can make certain angles where it's very strong and there are ways to cut those angles uh, to find the weak points, right? And uh, the, the mastery is that you're, you're, you're always able to move internally as you can feel deeper and deeper uh, where you can move those angles. And it looks like to, to the outside, it looks like you're not moving at all, but internally you're moving everything so that a person can never find uh, those, those weak, those, those angles to, to, cut, to cut into your sphere, right? And that's all based on awareness, awareness of the body and awareness of your opponent and having uh, the feel, the ability, the listening skill, one the ability to listen to what's going on and to feel what's going on, not just in your body, but eventually in that opponent's body too. That sounds crazy, right? But it's <laughs> touch a high level Kung Fu person that really has Kung Fu skill and you'll see what I mean, right? Um, so, the thing that I was impressed about Jeff was like, I felt like I could never cut into his sphere. And it had a lot to do with level, but I looked at, you know, his, of course, you know, sometimes you can't always judge people by level, the number of stripes they have, which in, in our style that the stripes on your, on your sash indicate your level. I, I was like, man, this guy's gotta be like, like a high level instructor, high, high in the student grades. And then I was like, wait a minute. And uh, you know, he told me his teacher, his, his teacher in the New York school is Joshua Craig. And Josh has, has uh, been real super cool with me and you know, said, hey man, if you ever come to a workshop in the city, you know, you can crash at my place. You know, I know you're, you're trying to do YouTube and, and really trying to spread the art through, through the Star Wars thing you're doing. And you know, I, I don't, you know, you're, you're on a budget and I'm gonna help you, help you with what you're doing because you know, that helps, that helps the school, right? It helps the Healy Chin Federation, the family spread, right? And you know, so I'm thinking, if Jeff is this good, how good is Josh? So now I like, I, I really wanna go to New York and like touch Josh, touch the people in New York. I'm like, man, like, 
I wish I had footage of, of me like doing like freestyle spinning with Jeff because the shit, sorry kids, but man, the shit he was doing to me, I was like, man, man, if you get good at this, you can fuck somebody's shit up. <laughs> I know that doesn't sound all Zen or um, Jedi, but hey man, one of the reasons you study martial arts is to fuck people up. I'm just going and to not get fucked up. I'm just being real and I'll, I'll totally admit that I stole that saying from um, Harvey Flanagan of the Crow Mags. He was in a uh, podcast interview with uh, my big bro, Mike Mahler and Sincere Hogan. Shout out to them and their uh, awesome podcast, the Live Life Aggressively podcast. You guys should totally check it out. Uh, they didn't ask me to plug them, but they're always plugging this channel and uh, they inspired me to get off my ass and, and start really taking this urban acolyte thing seriously. Um, you know, when the channel really started to, to take off uh, last January. But anyway, uh, yeah, I, I had a great time. I'm sorry that a lot of the footage, because I was like vlogging while I was there. A lot of the footage didn't come out well. Uh, my, uh, my little point and shoot a Nikon camera is a piece of garbage. Um, so it seems like I'm going to have to carry my DSLR camera everywhere with me now. I don't know how I'm gonna get this big monopod through uh, through customs because they're gonna be like, why do you have a big stick in your bag? It's like a weapon. It's like a freaking a screamer thing. That's what I'm holding my camera with right now. But I'll figure out some kind of way because uh, I'm planning to go back in April. Um, Sifu is, is so Grandmaster Sam F.S. Chin is teaching a workshop in April. Um, I'm gonna finally start my student grading levels I'm testing for grade uh, student level one, uh, possibly, excuse me, possibly level one and two. It would be awesome to have both of those um, and get tested on all of the 15 basic exercises. That would uh, mean that uh, this summer I'd be learning the 21 form uh, to start to uh, and, and working on uh, grade level three. And uh, I would feel more confident about getting um, the Music City Ely Chin Kung Fu Club uh, up and started here uh, in Nashville over the summer. Um, and my plans are to uh, to push ahead with Urban Acolyte training. Uh, the Music City Ely Chin Kung Fu Club will be housed under Urban Acolyte training. So uh, there will be elements of Ely Chin that will be in all of the curriculum, but uh, there's like other things that I wanna do uh, as far as uh, like teaching yoga, uh, meditation, and um, and I'm going to call it martial arts gymnastics. Um, and, and it's been interesting uh, seeing everybody's suggestions on the curriculum for that. Um, and I'm going to say, if you're not a fitness person, if you don't do any of this stuff, don't give me any suggestions. Don't give me any recommendations. Thanks, but no thanks. Um, because, you know, the whole Oh, Prince, you should train for a ninja, American Ninja Warrior. Okay, I'll train for American Ninja Warrior. You'll never get any more YouTube videos because I'll be too busy doing that. And I won't actually be training Kung Fu because there's a specific skill that's required to compete in that show. But Prince, you should you should go train with Ido Portal. Okay, I'm going to train with a motherfucker that I don't like. I think he's awesome, but I just, his personality just kind of turns me off. Um, as opposed to the other movement coaches who uh, don't have the marketing behind him, but are just as skilled um, and have been doing it longer. And they're actually, they're also martial artists who actually like, and they know people that I know, right? Like I know fitness people, I'm a fitness person. I know high level strength coaches and, and they trust the people that I'm learning from or, you know, or, you know, what about Steve Cotter? who Ido Portal attended some of his workshops and Steve Cotter is, is, was a, a internal martial artist and a kettlebell instructor. And he's also my boss at the IKFF. And he was ranked like one of the 100 fittest men in the world, even though he's in his forties and he like looks amazing. I mean, he's got good genetics, but still like, why, why do I want to go and, 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 and chase after windmills when I've got great mentors right here in my own backyard that I can 
reach out to on Facebook and they'll respond within minutes or hours depending on where Steve is in the world, right? So don't worry about me, I'm good. I, I've got a plan and things are gravy baby. Um, so I, I don't wanna end this sounding like a dickhead, but you know, I've had some interesting uh, conversations with people who I really need to say just butt out. Like if you're not, if you're not planning to do this training, <laughs> you're not ever planning to come to a workshop or become a student it really doesn't matter what your suggestion is because <laughs> you're not paying me you know it's it, it, honestly you know they say the customer is always right but the person who's never going to be a customer their opinion doesn't fucking matter right so who cares right go do your thing and let me do mine and you know and if you want to train with somebody or train for something you go do it, right? I'm almost 40 years old. I'm not going to break my neck to be on American Ninja Warrior and go to Europe to train with Ido Portal and there's people right here in America I could train with. Fuck that shit. Anyway, <laughs> I'm kind of clowning and whenever I cuss, y'all think I'm like angry. Oh, Prince is angry. Uh, that's my sense of humor, man. Like, uh, you know, I make fun of people. I laugh, I joke. It's all good. Anyway, I'm going to get out of here. Uh, security's out here. They're going to be wondering why this dude is walking around with a camera. They probably don't know I used to work here. Uh, so uh, that's all I got for this one. So thanks for watching. Y'all keep on breathing. May the force of others be with you. Always.